If you're looking to add Ethernet connections to your home network with an Ethernet switch, it can be really difficult to figure out which one you need to buy. There are lots of options on the internet, there are lots of terms that get included in the descriptions for these devices, and it can be really overwhelming to make a decision. The good news is I've put together some guiding questions that you can answer that will help you narrow down what type of switch you need to get. So in this episode from Network From Home, we're gonna be walking through these questions, and by the end of these steps, you'll be able to determine exactly what you need for your home network. No mission is successful without proper planning and your ethernet switch is no different. Before you go ahead and make any decisions about what switch to buy, you first need to do an inventory of your home network. You need to get an idea of how many devices you wanna provide with an ethernet connection to the internet because that will help you determine how many ports on the ethernet switch you need. For example, I here have a five port ethernet switch. There are many different types of switches. They come in five port, eight port, 20 port switches. And in order to determine which one to get, you need to know how many ethernet connections you need to provide in your home network. One thing to keep in mind here is that your router will have ethernet switches on the back and this factors into your calculation. You can use these ports for connecting devices to the internet with an ethernet cable. You can also use the ports on your switch, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that one port on your switch and one port on your router will be used to connect these two devices together. So if you buy a five port switch, just keep in mind that it's really only adding four ethernet ports to your home network. As a general rule of thumb here, most users will get away with a five port or eight port ethernet switch but do your own inventory of your home network before making that decision. While you're making a decision about how many ethernet ports your switch needs, it's also important to consider what your home network looks like. Depending upon the configuration and the layout of the devices in your home network, this can impact your decisions when making an ethernet switch. Let's talk about what I mean here. Okay, so here in this example, all your devices are close to your router. Maybe you just need one ethernet switch with a bunch of ports so you can provide all these devices with an ethernet connection. But what if, let's go into this next scenario here. What if you have a cluster of devices that are far away from your router? Maybe you wanna just connect these devices to a switch. These devices connect to your router and that's all you need. And maybe in that case, you only need a five port switch to meet your needs. Lastly, let's look at this scenario. What if you have two clusters of devices that are far away from your router? Maybe in this scenario, you're better off getting two five port switches so you can connect the devices in one cluster to a switch. You can connect the other devices in the other cluster to the other switch. And then you only need two ethernet cables going between your switches and your router. This will simplify things from an ethernet cable management standpoint and this will allow all your devices to connect to the internet with an ethernet connection. The next question to answer is what internet activities will the devices that are connected to your switch be performing? The reason this is important is because there are two different types of bandwidths that are supported by switches. Switches can either come with gigabit per second ethernet ports or they can come with ethernet ports supporting 100 megabits per second. Obviously, if you're connecting Internet of Things devices or devices that don't really require a lot of bandwidth, you can get away with a switch that provides 100 megabit per second Ethernet ports. But honestly, 99% of the time, I would recommend you get gigabit per second Ethernet ports. That way you're ensuring your switch isn't serving as a bottleneck for your home network and that no matter what Internet activities your devices are performing, you won't have anything to worry about. The reason that I mention these 100 megabit per second ethernet switches in the first place is just because they're dirt cheap when compared to these gigabit ethernet switches. I'm not talking about a ton of money here. You can probably get a gigabit ethernet switch for around $20 and maybe you can get a 100 megabit per second ethernet switch for $5. So there's a little bit of difference there, but honestly, it's a low cost for a gigabit ethernet switch anyway so you should probably err on the side of caution and just make sure you have enough bandwidth for your devices. The next question to answer here is how much configuration and administration do you wanna be able to perform with your ethernet switch? 
a lot of people just want plug and play. They just want to plug it in and have it work. In these cases, you want an unmanaged switch. When it comes to the other side of the coin, you want some administration, you want to be able to set quality of service settings, you want to be able to separate devices into different virtual networks. Those require managed switches. They're a little more complex. You need to log into them and change the settings much like you would a router. You also need to periodically update their firmware. And you usually find these in business settings or more complex home networks. Most people can get away with an unmanaged switch and it's the least amount of overhead from an administrative standpoint. The third type of switch here, aside from managed and unmanaged switches, is a PoE switch or power over ethernet. These switches are useful when you have devices that you need to require power through ethernet cables. For example, security cameras, wireless access points. Some of these devices allow you to provide power to them through ethernet cables. If this is the case and you have these types of devices in your home network, you can get a PoE switch. Keep in mind too that you can use a power over ethernet switch as a regular switch. It doesn't need to be providing power to devices, but keep in mind that these PoE switches are more expensive. So if you don't have these types of devices in your home network, you're better off just getting an unmanaged switch. So which ethernet switch should you buy? Unfortunately, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a letdown here. I don't have a silver bullet solution for you, and that's because there are different switches for different needs in different home networks. Depending upon how you answered the questions that we previously talked about, that will determine exactly what type of switch to get. I will tell you that you're better off going with well-known manufacturers. For example, if you get a switch made by Netgear or TP-Link, you're in pretty good shape. Most switches, especially the unmanaged ones, they're very simple devices. They're not really complex, so these well-known manufacturers know exactly what they're doing. They have a lot of experience with them. Also, if you're getting a power over ethernet or a managed switch, I wouldn't give you any different device, honestly. Just use a manufacturer, TP-Link or Netgear, and you'll be in pretty good shape. I'll provide some suggestions down below, just as examples, if you need a five port switch an eight port switch, a PoE switch, a managed switch. I'll provide examples to get you started, but chances are, again, depending how you answer those questions that we previously went through, that will help you determine exactly what you need. Okay, fine. If you're looking for a recommendation, here's what I'll say. I would say probably 95% of you will want a five or eight port switch. You'll want it to be unmanaged, You'll want gigabit ethernet ports, and you'll want it to be made by either Netgear or TP-Link. The one that I have here in my home network is made by Netgear. I'll include that link down below. Again, this will fit the needs of most of you, but not all of you, and that's why I'll provide these other suggestions in the description as well. If you're still not sure what switch you need to buy, please drop a comment below. If you found this video useful or this buying guide was helpful for you, please give it a like so that way other people will get exposed to it as well when they're making decisions about ethernet switches in their home network. And lastly, if you like this type of content, you like my videos, for some reason maybe you think I'm entertaining, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'll have plenty more videos just like this one coming out in the future. And as always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.